Neglect, laziness, lackluster, needless, rip off. Jelly scroll, what, what the f is jelly scroll? These are just a few of the words used to describe Apple's latest iPad mini update. And while I can understand a lot of these criticisms, I also know that there is a devote following of iPad mini users out there. And like it or not, the iPad mini is a unique experience that no other iPad can offer. So after all the complaints, is the new iPad mini worth it? And is it a bigger update than you think? Listen, I'll make this short. There's no sponsor for this video, but I am trying to get to 400,000 subscribers by the end of this year. And listen, this is war. YouTube is war, okay? And I need soldiers. Soldiers that are willing to die for me. I'm like your Napoleon. If like Napoleon reviewed Apple products. So I can't think of a better pitch for you to subscribe to the channel and to like this video. If you like Napoleon, the dessert, or the French general, also maybe a dictator. It's a hot topic that historians argue about. Kind of like how tech reviewers argue about the iPad mini. Oh, look at that segue. So what makes the iPad mini so unique? Isn't it just a small, cheap iPad? Well, yes, in a way, that is exactly what the mini is. And it's just a shrunken down version of the existing iPad Air. It even has the same display specs as the iPad Air with a liquid retina LCD display that gets up to 500 nits of brightness just crammed into a smaller 8.3 inch display. And that makes all the difference. The smaller form factor of the iPad mini is what separates it from every other iPad in Apple's lineup because it is the truest expression of the original vision of the iPad. Its only expectation is to be a tablet and it is the best tablet experience. And it's not meant to be anything else. Unlike every other iPad that Apple sells, it doesn't have a smart connector on the back, which means that it can't easily connect to a keyboard case. This means for the most part, you are not expected to buy any expensive accessories for your mini. You aren't meant to use this device to replace your laptop and it doesn't even have the ambition to do that. You are just meant to use this as a third device that sometimes offers a better experience than your phone and a better experience than your computer. It's great for reading emails, or reading in general. Everyone loves to read, right? It's also good for watching YouTube videos, which I'm hoping is what you use it for to watch this channel, uh, browsing the webs, playing games. All of these tasks feel right at home on the mini. And because it's so small and light, it's the most comfortable iPad to use and the easiest to carry along with you. But it also has a big problem. And it's actually not a problem that is unique to the iPad mini. It affects every non-pro iPad in Apple's lineup. And that is the display. Stay there, Apple Pencil. It's fine. That's it, it's, it's just fine. It's not good, it's not great, it's not bad. It's fine, it's passable, it's acceptable. But I think we deserve a little bit more than acceptable from Apple. Listen, I'll be upfront. I think it is unrealistic to expect that Apple would offer any meaningful upgrades to the mini's display this year. The pro models for crying out loud just got upgraded to an OLED display for the first time ever. And that came with a huge price increase. You have to spend a thousand dollars to get the base model iPad pro. And that is double the cost of the iPad mini. And as I stated before, the mini is basically just a smaller version of the iPad air. And they both have the same display technology. They're both LCD displays that run at 60 Hertz. So, while we could dream of a world where the iPad mini got some sort of huge display upgrade, maybe be the first iPad besides the Pro to get an OLED display, that was realistically never going to happen. With that being said, I agree with the criticism that the iPad experience is defined by its display. As Apple puts it, it is a magical sheet of glass that can transform into any experience that you want. And the iPad mini and the iPad Air and all iPads deserve a better display. I think that comes in two areas. First of all, this iPad mini at least deserves a 120 Hertz ProMotion display. We have had ProMotion displays on the iPad Pro since 2017. That was seven years ago. And the starting price for that 10.5 inch iPad Pro at the time was $649. The iPad mini is a little cheaper, right? It's $500, but that's still expensive for a tablet. And the iPad Air is $600. So after seven years, a 120 Hertz LCD display is clearly cheap enough to put into both of these iPads. And that would help solve an issue that this iPad has that many users complain about. And that is the jelly scrolling effect. Yes, I knew what it was this entire time. Because when you scroll in portrait mode on the iPad mini, it can kind of create this smearing effect that is really apparent on dark backgrounds with white text. 
and it just makes the display, like I said, look like you're smearing text. It looks blurry. It is not pleasant to look at and it's a little distracting. It's something that shouldn't be on a device where you might be reading a lot of text and scrolling more than usual because it's uh, a smaller display. And furthermore, the 120 Hertz on the iPad is even more important than it would be on an iPhone because of this, the Apple Pencil Pro. Now, yes, an upgrade for this year's Mini is that this comes with the new Apple Pencil Pro. You can use the Apple Pencil Pro on the Mini and it has some new features like the hover ability that will show you exactly where your pencil will land, a barrel roll feature that can change the width of the brush and a new haptic squeeze feature that quickly brings up additional tools and is really fun to click if you uh, like to fiddle with things. Fiddlers out there, unite. But using that new feature is where I first noticed the lower refresh rate on the iPad mini because every time I use that squeeze gesture to bring up additional pen tools, it looked like the animation was kind of laggy, which is something I have never experienced on my iPad Pro. On top of that, drawing and writing with the 120 Hertz display just looks and feels so much smoother because the screen refresh rate is twice the rate of a 60 Hertz display. And it makes writing on a 120 Hertz display feel more like a one-to-one -one interaction with the digital ink appearing instantly. Whereas on the 60 Hertz, you can notice that it's not as instant. That is a realistic upgrade I think we could expect for this year. But secondly, even though I didn't expect this upgrade this year, I do think it's time for Apple to do whatever it has to do. Buy a display factory, buy Samsung. I don't care what you have to do. You gotta get OLED displays on these iPads because it deserves an OLED display. It would solve almost every issue that people have with the regular iPad lineup. And honestly, that is really the only problem this mini has in my experience. And it's not even a deal breaker, like I said. The display is annoyingly fine, just not great. Not what we expect from an Apple display in 2024. And that's why the mini is so frustrating because the other upgrades here are meaningful. And Apple has done a lot to fix the iPad mini. First of all, it gets a way better base model, now starting at 128 gigabytes of storage for the same $500 price point. When the iPad mini redesign came out three years ago, it only came with 64 gigabytes of storage for that same price. And even three years ago, that was just way too low for storage. Now with 128 gigabytes of storage, it is finally at a place where you can recommend it to most people. And that's good because most people should probably only get the base model of this thing. You don't wanna invest too much on an iPad mini. The biggest upgrade though, is that new A17 Pro chip. It is super powerful. And honestly, it makes the raw performance of this device a bargain at its price point. I noticed the upgraded CPU instantly. It makes my new mini feel much snappier than my old model. And the increase in memory specifically is dramatic with double the memory of the old mini. It gets eight gigabytes of RAM. And you notice just how much longer apps stay open in the background without needing to be refreshed. And everything that you do on this device just feels much smoother because of that. It also means you can now run apps that were previously unavailable on the old iPad mini. For example, you can now run Final Cut Pro, which doesn't run on the old mini and doesn't run on the regular iPad. That's a nice thing to have on this mini. You can also play AAA level games on the mini like Resident Evil 4 Remake. Although I will say that one disappointment with the A17 Pro in the new mini is that it does come with one less GPU core than the version that came in the iPhone 15 Pro. And I could definitely notice the more sluggish performance in these more demanding AAA level games. Still for mobile games like Call of Duty Warzone, the iPad mini is a dream form factor to play on where the screen is small enough to comfortably hold, but the display is big enough for a better viewing experience. I actually had a lot of fun connecting a third party gaming controller like the Razer Kishi controller that made my mini feel more like a Nintendo Switch. And this form factor was great to play through all the native games that run on the mini, as well as stream games directly to my mini from my PlayStation 5. In fact, it was these types of experiences using the iPad mini in more unorthodox ways, ways in which I would never use my bigger iPad Pro that made me appreciate the form factor of this device. And it made me understand why people love the iPad mini so much. 
it is that magical sheet of glass that can transform into any experience. All of the other upgrades that Apple made to this year's Mini feel noticeable and offer a big improvement over my old model. Sure, it has the same design, and yes, the bezels are probably a little bit chunkier than I would like, and it still has Touch ID and the power button, right? It's the same design as the old Mini. But all of the internal upgrades that Apple made to the Mini this year do feel noticeable. They are a big improvement over the old model. So don't be fooled. The new iPad Mini, it isn't bad, and it's a bigger upgrade in day-to-day -day use than you might think. And it really is only missing just one piece. No, no, not that one piece. It's missing a better display. And if that doesn't bother you, you'll love this iPad mini. But if it does, well, I'd say maybe you should wait for a bigger upgrade down the line, if that ever happens. But hopefully you like this video. And if you did, please give me a like. If you want to see more from the channel, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.